guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Kelsey. I'm the creator of Bite Size Ancient History and a recent graduate of Cambridge University. If you're new here, this video is part of a series that I've been doing throughout the whole of 2022 where I discuss historical films and TV shows to tell you what the actual historical reality is behind them. And that is because I studied classics at undergraduate level and then Egyptology at master's level. If this sounds like something you might be interested in, don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss out on any others. If you like ancient historical content generally, don't forget to check out my other social medias. Today, I'm excited to tell you that we're going to be talking about the Moon Knight trailer and I don't know about you, but I am a massive Marvel fan and it's literally a few days away so I'm so excited to be doing this. I'm going to be talking about it purely from the perspective of an Egyptologist. I do not know the comics in depth so I'm not going to venture there. If you do, that's great, comment it down below, but I'm not. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get into it. In the trailer you see a very dark shadowy figure and I'll add a picture here. From my research the comics call this figure Khonshu. I'm very pleased to tell you that this was a real Egyptian god so this is like grounded in real Egyptian mythology if you know what I mean. Khonshu or you can also pronounce it Khonsu was the god of the moon so moon knight perfect. His name in Egyptian can literally be translated as Traveller, and this refers to the travels of the moon each night. If you know anything about Egyptian gods, you know that their figures and forms can often change, and this is no different with Khonsu. I'll show you now a picture of his human form, and now of his falcon form, which you'll notice is very similar to what we see in the trailer. The only slight difference in their depiction of this god is that they have a staff with the kind of like half moon on the top of it, whereas he has it on his head, which is the much more traditional Egyptian depiction. So obviously from the trailer alone, we do not know a lot about this character. So I'm just gonna tell you as much as I can about this figure in Egyptian mythology. And then maybe as the series progresses, we start to see some links and connections so potentially spoiler warning but i obviously have no idea yet myself so up to you he is often traditionally depicted as a mummy and i think this kind of links into oscar isaac's character's costume when he takes on this new personality as you see we have these like bandage wrappings so i think that's quite a cool reference whether they meant to or not because they may have just gone with oh we're doing ancient egypt let's go with mummy wrappings but it's a happy coincidence if they did not so, Khonsu is a very old Egyptian god, and we see him from the Old Kingdom period. If you don't know Egyptian timelines, do not worry. When we're talking about Old Kingdom, this is one of the oldest periods of Egyptian history, those that are most distant from us. It then carries on generally into Middle Kingdom and then into New Kingdom. There are other sub-periods in between, but we'll leave it at that for now. Khonsu is mentioned in the pyramid text, and this is one of the oldest burial texts, so kind of the prerequisite to the much more famous Book of the Dead text. The section in the pyramid text which I'm referring to is now given the title The Cannibal Hymns, so you can imagine how this god was perceived in early Egyptian periods. Not great. These pyramid texts, much like the Book of the Dead, were used as a kind of guide to the deceased to try and help them progress into the afterlife successfully. In this earlier period with the pyramid texts, this is restricted to the elite population. And the role that Khonsu would play in these texts, in these cannibal texts, would be that he'd literally devour the other gods. He was a cannibal. So... With regards to the series, we're going to see this figure being pretty insane, which makes sense with some of the clips that we've seen. Generally, unfortunately, he's not a very popular god. We find rare depictions of him early on, and I guess that may be because of his ferocious nature. Over time, he grows in popularity, and we start to learn a little bit more about him. So we know that his parents are Amun and Mut. Amun, you probably know most famously with his hybridised title of Amun-Ra, so in films like The Mummy, and Mut is most famously a mother goddess, so that makes sense. He really starts to receive recognition in the New Kingdom period, so the latest period in Egyptian history before we get the foreign invaders of like the Greeks and the Romans. And with this popularity, 
popularity, he loses this more destructive and chaotic energy and he starts to become known as the greatest of all gods. At this time, there is a temple complex dedicated him for the first time in Karnak. In this, he is actually depicted as one of the creator gods. In later periods with the Greco-Romans, he then also becomes associated with these healing powers. So we can see this ultimate transition from chaotic cannibalism to like helpful healer. As a healer, he is immensely popular with many Egyptian citizens choosing to name their children after him and kind of to invoke his protection. In later Ptolemaic temples, he also becomes associated with fertility of both people and land. And we're going to leave it at that today because the trailer hasn't given much else away with regards to ancient Egypt. But as soon as episodes start coming out, I'm going to be doing weekly updates and talking about the historical reality and the Egyptian myth behind the show. So if this sounds like something you might be interested in, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next week. Bye.